Hello and welcome back. Okay, today is both exciting and a little bit daunting. I'm going to be converting one of the most complex bits of circuit in the VGA build into PCBs from breadboard. And that's going to open up a lot of doors for extending the circuit in future. Okay, so we've got two modules of the VGA converted into PCB. We've got the interface which handles connecting everything to the main memory system. We've also got the sync generator, but we've got the tile map is still breadboard. We've got the output DAX, but that's a very temporary circuit at the moment. We're going to be working on that significantly later on. But this is ready to be converted. Now we've been calling this both the frame buffer and the tile map because in the final configuration of the VJ circuit, it's going to be a tile map. But at the moment, we're using the 8-bit data contained in each cell as a primitive frame buffer to give us a nice, clean, linear development path towards a, a, the final VJ circuit. But this is in its final form, and it's a really good idea now to turn this into a PCB. Let's give it a quick test to uh, confirm that everything's still working. Okay, so this is the sideways scrolling demo. So this is using both the X and the Y scrolling registers to move the frame buffer around. And then we fill in the data at the boundary to, uh, to give this nice smooth scrolling effect. One thing I really like about this one is we can see the counters for the horizontal scroll and the vertical scroll ticking away here and relate that exactly to what's going on on the screen. I think it's time to remove this circuit and uh, prepare to turn it into a PCB. These temporary connections back into the sync generator, they cause me a bit of uh, trouble because they don't have a good ground path here. So we had to substitute in a bunch of others. I don't need these address lines. Don't need mem data. These lines are the sync outputs and the blanking outputs that go to the output circuit. It's the memory write line and the memory region line. Those are the load lines for the four register bytes. Okay, now a lot of this circuitry I think is going to end up being reused. So I'm going to try and keep this intact and we'll maybe see this one again soon. Okay, so that should be everything hooked up. We're just missing this PCB, which we need to go and make. Okay, so when we did the temporary backplane, we kind of roughed out the size of the board that we wanted to fit things into and the connectors for it. Hopefully that's going to work. Otherwise we're back to redoing the back plane. So I cut out that section and reproduced the connectors and I've got their symbols here in the schematic. I also dug out this, which is an adapted footprint for the 7164S, which is the SMD version of the memory chip that we've got in the frame buffer at the moment. The frame buffer of a tile map needs the registers to store the scroll offset, it needs the memory chip, and then it needs the XY counters and the appropriate logic chips to mediate the XY counters and the address bus to actually handle the addressing into the memory chip. Now I'm already thinking that this is going to be very tight, but let's see what we can do. Now the sprite is going to be very similar to this. We're going to have a block of memory with X and Y positioning data and the circuitry is going to be a very close copy of this, but we do need some extra logic to handle the sprite going on top of um, our image data. And so um, if we're going to fit the sprite in the same size as this, we need a little bit of space left over. Now I could shift some circuitry to the back of the PCB in order to keep the build compact, but I'd rather avoid that. But I do want to keep the whole thing in a reasonable space. So let's see how well we can do with these components on this board. Okay, so while we were doing the video, I did create quite a bit of schematic. This is the vertical scrolling registers. Is the SR latch and the combinatorial logic to apply that to load Y. There's the Y counter data. 
is it X. This is X and Y. Don't need that duplicated. So these are the counters and the latches. Now we put this VJ reg 0, 1, 2 and 3, but we've got the real ones now. Now I've got 12 LEDs lined up here, but for X we actually only need 10, because anything beyond 1024 is useless. And for Y we only need 9. So I could cut those LEDs down. I could even share one of these resistor arrays if I had to. Actually, we know we're tight on space. Let's do that. Let's go for 10 each because that's nice and balanced. A bit more sensible if we line all of those up. Okay, that's unintentionally matching the labels up there. Make sure we fix that. Okay, well, they're not going to go there very easily. This board is the same width as the channels in the audio system. And I've got four of these chips across, but it was a very tight squeeze and I didn't have an edge connector. So I could put these across up the top. If I pack it all in a bit tighter. I do need the caps on these as well though. Or I could go in sideways. Okay, that does not feel very space efficient. Let's assume it's possible to route that. That'll be the NAND gates. OK, so that's the registers and the counters on about half the PCB. That's a bit of a squeeze. It's going to be tough to route, but I feel slightly uh, better about this. I do need to get the mem data lines up to here. Actually, let's try a different arrangement. Let's fix the naming of that cluster. And the three bits from X and Y we want to bring out are the outputs, not the registers. Let's fix it on the back plane. The wiring the back plane currently has doesn't need to change because it's just going to line up. All right, what chips are we missing? Right, so we need four 157s, so that's two for X and two for Y. And what we're doing with these is differentiating the output data from the counters from the current value on the address bus. And we switch between those based on the memory select line, which needs to be the tile map memory region. Right, so we know the bottom three bits are not needed because each tile is going to be 8 by 8 pixels. Now for the X, we need to go up to 10. Actually, we should only need to go up to 9 because we only need 10 bits for the address. For Y, we only need to go up to 8. Now, the routing on this is going to be pretty tough, so I don't think it's worth us doing extras just to uh, play nice. So these are the X values out the counter. Now. Obviously, we have to pair these up with address lines and then the outputs. Then 
this is where it's worth reminding ourselves that since we're controlling both the read and write to these memory chips, the address lines and data lines don't matter at all in their ordering. We connect A0 to address 0, address 1 to A1, all in order. But if we swapped a couple around, it would just swizzle the way the data was stored inside the memory chip. In fact, there's no guarantee that uh, these lines actually line up with the grid inside the chip at all anyway. So I suggest we don't line those up until we know what's actually going to work best for us. The only other thing I can suddenly think we need is we need a 541 to conditionally push mem data onto the RAM chips data lines. These will need to connect to the I.O. lines here, but in whatever order we feel like. OK, we've added the 4157s, the line driver and the latch. So I think that's all the chips that we actually need in this circuit. We're going to need some capacitors, but we can probably approximate the layout now. That's the opposite of what we wanted. I've made that mistake a lot. OK, and that almost feels roomy, he says before trying to root it. Right, so the read goes low to signify the memory area selection for writing. So the address needs to point at the first of a pair and the calculated location from the counters to the second because that's going to be our default when that line's high. And then we take out the output that we're actually going to drive the address line with. Now I'm thinking alternates up here is going to be the right way to go. OK, we've got some more work to do with uh, these. But let's have a quick look at how that's panning out. I wonder if we can do these vertically and fit all four in. It's not going to make the routing very easy, I know. Now, I kind of like this, but I'll need to reorder all of these. Let's just do X and see how that works. OK, so what I'm seeing here is the address lines are higher and then the display lines are lower physically. So if we turn these upside down, it might be slightly easier because so I'd have to reorder them all again. Repeat that for these four. All right, same pattern here. Much less important here, but we may as well follow the same pattern. Right now we need the right enable line that's going to go into the RAM chip. And we're going to use the multiplexing here to gate that in. So it's either the load line or if the select isn't low, we're definitely not writing because we're just reading out of it for the VGA. Put it directly high. And this extra spare one here, we do something very similar with. But we're going to control the output enable. OK, I think that's the core functionality of the device wired up. Apart from we need all the rest of the lines on the memory chip. OK, active high chip select goes up there. The active low chip select. 
Now I'm going to guess what works for the data lines. This probably looks fairly random at first glance, but I'm basically just taking the data lines in order from right to left. We don't actually use the top bits from these counters. We'll the top two bits over here. All right, so the 574 is always outputting. It needs the VJ clock. Output enable on the line driver. That's conditionally taking data from the main memory bus, outputting it to our data lines if and only if a write operation is in place. So that actually connects it to these inputs up here. That's good. Now there are latch chips with a smaller latch count. But I'm not sure I'm bold enough to mix them. Might look into that though, because it'd be nice to save some space for the sprite board. That output enable could go to either of them and the other one needs to go to ground. It is worth remembering though, because that might help us route around the chip. We're currently using vertical sync to clear the set reset latch. But I'm going to use this new line reset line and I'm going to, since this is another bit in the sync ROM, I'm just going to initialize that as sync V next time I generate the ROM. And then this circuit will work as it did before. But then uh, there's going to be a later video in which I tweak the value here slightly. Don't use the blanking on this circuit. Okay, it's going to be an absolute miracle for this to all work first time. Now I need capacitors, 19 of them. I mean, everything's a squeeze, but nothing's impossible. You have to start routing it, I guess. Okay, that breaks the pattern and come down on that. Lower Y1, be better if we swap them around. Okay, these are going to be really tough and I'm wondering if they would actually be better off in a vertical configuration where I can take the VJ data lines in a straight line across. Okay, I think this section can come up by a couple of millimeters and I might need the space down here. I need to get these lines 
down here. Here's an easy EDA tip. Plain layers, for some reason, are really bad performing when you move large numbers of components. So I'm just going to switch them to signal while I do this. Just switch those back to planes. So what I'm focusing on at the moment is just trying to get this top section either fully wide or at least the lines taken out of it. Okay, that's everything but the register output lines brought down. Okay, this one looks like it might be easier to go that way around. Sometimes you have to just start a difficult section and see how it's going to go. Okay, getting those bus lines down is going to be tough. Let's finish these ones first though, and then worry about it. Now some of these can come behind this connector and get them out of my hair. Okay, when we do the PCB for the sprite, the equivalent chips there, I think we'll uh, try and position these inputs a lot better. It's these big bundles that are uh, problematic.
I fixed that but didn't update it. Getting these five lines down here is going to be tough. Not looking forward to that. Still a lot less rat lines here. Actually, worst case scenario, I could actually bring those down somewhere else and not over on the left. I've got a lot more space over here, even if I have to bring them all the way across the bottom. I'm just conscious if I bring top level lines down here, running kind of parallel to these bottom layer lines, I'm not going to be able to bring anything across here. Okay, these are my big pain point lines now. This stuff down here is going to be difficult, but I don't think it's more difficult than the stuff we've already dealt with. Okay, so I'm trying to tidy up these peripheral lines and then worry about all these core addresses and a couple of the extra signals. So these are basically the counters for the true X and Y position coming down. They go into the multiplexers to drive the address lines when we're not driving it directly from the address bus. The other thing I'm thinking is these lines indirectly come from mem data. They go to the right hand side of the memory chip. Now I could flip this the other way around, but I really don't like having chips upside down on the circuit board. But 
we know the sprite board is going to have similar circuitry with this but have a few more components so i think definitely if we get the driver chip over the other side of the memory chip and get the mem data input over the other side that's going to make life a lot easier and it will also mean that we don't have to bring all of these lines down the side although um having this down where we actually generate it separate from the the counters and registers would probably be a smart move as well I quite like working within the constraints I set myself, but um, that doesn't mean to say we uh, can't take notes and do better next time. We can reorder these to make it a bit easier. So the one that's currently five, be easier if it goes to where four currently goes the one that's currently four to where two currently goes So once again, now we're actually routing it, we can go through here and just look at the order that it's sensible to get these lines out and just reorder those lines because it doesn't actually matter as long as the address lines here go to unique address lines over here. Right, finish off this stuff down here. Right, now we do have the option to switching these two around and that looks like it's desirable. I think this is the last significant distance line to deal with. Let's see how many DRC errors there are. Add a ground fill to each of the sides. Now this is a pretty packed board. Now if I had a bit more room up here I could do something a bit more um, creative with the labelling. Would actually be nice if those were the opposite way around just for visual purposes but I'm not going to change the entire circuit just for that. I hate to say it but I think we might be done. Okay, let's take a look at this. Is it going to be fun?
Okay, these resistor arrays are often some of the toughest components to get right. Now, I am reliably informed by the smart Alex in my comment section that there is a right and a wrong way round for these. So I'm going to try and get them right, but I apologise if I get them wrong. Actually looks like I haven't quite got enough paste on there. It's extremely difficult to moderate the paste quantity manually like that. Now we come to a place where I've got a slight variation from what I said designing the PCB. The silk screen here says HCT163, but these chips I'm putting down for the horizontal counters are actually ACT. Now these have identical pinouts, identical input and outputs, but they do switch slightly quicker. So the HCT parts were right on the boundary for horizontal for their counting. This RAM chip has pins that go slightly under, so it's quite important we get this right. Solder paste is a bit smeared out there. I think it'll be okay though. Okay, I need to get the hot air warmed up. I've just noticed that she sent me six of these. I don't think any of those uh, resistor arrays have behaved particularly well. Some commenters have been trying to convince me to try a hot plate or a reflow oven. I think it would be a good idea to start trying out some of those techniques. Now, definitely need to do some touching up on that one. There's a tiny solder bridge there. Do need to be much more careful with the solder paste for those. Right, I think this is a nice looking board. Let's give it a go. Okay, so once again, 
it's that point where I find out uh, if I'm going to be a happy man and this will be a rationally linked video. Okay, let's power it up. Now all the scroll registers have come on and the CPU is defaulted into break mode. So what we do know is when I run the initialization code is going to execute and it should reset these registers to the neutral position. Okay, I don't know off the top of my head if these values are right, but they did change. Okay, um, I suppose I should just run some code and see if it does what we expect. It's looking promising there. Okay, well, that's obviously not quite working. The main frame buffer component does look right, but the scroll registers don't seem to be doing the right thing. Let's try writing to these directly. Okay, this should be the bottom eight bits of X. Top. Bottom eight bits of Y. Okay, they seem to work okay. Let's just try a different pattern. I've got a bad feeling about this. The LED pattern is the opposite of what it should be. Let's try F0. This is not good. Yeah, it's the wrong way around there. Not sure where that mistake crept in. Yeah, look at that. Ah, uh, that's terrible. Now, obviously I'm gonna to have to do a new version of this PCB. I can't leave it like this, but is there any way to bodge this? Right, we can cut the tracks collectively here. Then what we need to do is connect the lines up here in reverse order. Okay, well, this is working now. Now, the thing I've done to fix this is I've made a software change to output the reversed form of the registers so that this will actually start working now. now that's not a permanent fix. I need to do a new version of this board with the, the wiring from MemData into these registers reversed the correct way. That's a uh, it's really annoying, but um, it's not the end of the world. I may even attempt to bodge so we can work with this board in the meantime, but uh, that will probably be, be a video on the second channel if I can get that to work. But hey, this was a complicated board and that's uh, not the worst mistake we've ever made. And we have proved that the circuit is doing the right thing apart from that one mistake. Actually, no, stop the press. I came up with a really crazy idea. Check this out. I'm gonna run one of my AVA demos without any code modification. Now we can see here the scroll registers completely messing up. But now what I'm gonna do is invert the bus inputs on mem data. And you notice that starts to work because the register values are getting inverted, but now the values being placed onto the mem data bus for the tile map board are also getting bit reversed, so it starts to work correctly.
But if I rerun the code, the same bit reverse is happening to the color data. So that messes up. But I can also swap the DuPont cable around to reverse the order of the bits on the output. So with those two circuit changes, this board starts to work correctly. Now, this is not a solution at all. I do need to fix this board, but I can continue to work with it fully working with just this modification. OK, so that is not the worst mistake I've ever made, and it's probably not going to be the last mistake I make. But um, I'm kind of quite pleased that we were both able to decode the exact problem and make a software patch that resolved it, but also then find a temporary solution just swapping the, the cables around that enabled us to get the board fully working. So I can use this board to continue developing other parts of the circuit whilst I uh, make a patch to the PCB design and, and get a replacement sent over. OK, well, I really hope you enjoyed this. Um, I certainly had a bit of a laugh at the end there. So thanks a lot for watching. I will see you again soon. Goodbye.